now salary being 40000 per month regular pension 20000 per month okay date of retirement 1722 30% commuted and received commuted 30% and pension received being 6 lakhs on 110 22 110 this is the first commutation second time also it commutes the date of second time commutation being on uh, 1 2 23 40% is and received 8 lakhs find out the taxable pension under all the cases salary and pension and all the cases so one is all about uh, government employee another one is non government but gratuity receive another one is non government no gratuity case these are the three scenarios the first one being the salary salary is received from year beginning to the date of retirement first uh, jan so here first april 22 date of retirement being 1722 first commutation being 1122 second commutation being 1223 year end being 313323 in this period he gets salary of rupees 40000 in this uh, case he gets a pension of rupees 20 in this case 30% commuted so 70% could be the regular pension adavadu 14000 commuted pension 30% commute pannar liya adu evlo kadachirukku 6 lakhs kadachirukku adukapra in the period la varumbodu pension undu innum 40 commute pannar inna 30 dhaan irukku 100 la 30 pochu 40 pochu 70 pochu innum 30% dhaan irukum upper regular pension is 6 commuted pension for the 40 percentage of full value being 8 lakhs is that clear now let me finish up the first one salary being 40 into 3 1 lakh 20000 here that will be taxable in all the scenarios taxable in all the scenarios the next being pension regular so i have taken this 40 first now this 20 from 1st july to 1st october okay 1st july 22 to 1st october 22 how many months 7 8 9 3 months per month 20 means 3 months 60000 maybe the regular salary for the first 3 months after the retirement after the retirement then again regular pension of 14000 will be receivable from after the first commutation that is 11022 to 11022 to 1223 1223 so 10 11 12 january 4 months per month he gets 14 14000 into 4 months isn't it this is for only 4 months 3 months 3 months 4 months finally it's 2 months so 4 into 14 Fifty-six thousand is taxable for the all the category of employees, all the categories of employees. Fifty-six thousand, fifty-six thousand. And uh, after the second commutation, one to twenty-three onwards, up to thirty-first March twenty-three, the regular pension is only six thousand. That is for only two months. So twelve thousand, twelve thousand, twelve thousand, twelve thousand, twelve thousand. And twelve thousand. We got the value here. We got the value here. Is that clear? Now, 
commuted pension. I am going to take care of the commuted pension here. Commuted pension on 110.22, the first commutation, the value being 6 lakhs, value being 6 lakhs. Okay, now we have to find out the exemption. I am going to subtract the exemption here. In case of government employee, fully exempted. In case of non-government employee receiving the gratuity, one half of, sorry, one, uh, one third of the total commuter pension is exempted. So, 6 lakhs is nothing but, 6 lakhs is nothing but 30 percent commutation. Then full commutation is into 100 by, 100 by 30, I think 20 lakhs. And out of that, one third will be enjoyable. Okay. 3 lakhs, uh, 20 lakhs into 6 lakhs, 66,667. Now, this exemption should not go beyond this. Out of 6 lakhs, 66,667, your commuted, uh, commuted pension is only 6 lakhs. Otherwise, you enjoy it. You now enjoy only 6 lakhs. You now enjoy only 6 lakhs. Minus on the record. And in the second case, this is first case. This is second case. You get 6 lakhs into 100 by 30 being the full commuted pension. Where as he is not receiving the gratuity, half of this will be exempted, which is 10 lakhs. But uh, the commuted pension is only 6 lakhs. Na, and the alok na, namak exemption kudu 6 lakhs. 6 lakhs is completely exempted. So all the three will be now enjoying the benefits. No need to pay any tax for the first commutation. And second commutation happens on 1223. 1223. And the date, in your commutation, 8 lakhs. And for non government, where graduate is received, so now, 8 lakhs. Last case, non government, no graduate received 8 lakhs. Minus exempted. In case of uh, government employee are fully exempted. In case of non-government employee, graduate received. To what extent now exempted? Come on. One third of full pension is exempted in his lifetime only once. But already he is eligible for this much. No, that's a lifetime. Already he enjoyed 60 means still he can enjoy only 66,667. Restricted to that. So you now reduce this to only 66,667. Is that clear? This one third or one half of the total computer pension is the one time in lifetime. Okay, if there is any unexpired amount available, subsequent commutation you can enjoy that benefit. And then the third, this case, third case, six lakhs enjoyed, still we have how much? Four lakhs. So you can claim that four lakhs here being the deduction. Now the taxable income, taxable income. Other than the standard deduction, I have not considered the tax uh, standard deduction here. Okay, we will see that later. So, what is the value? 1,20,000 plus uh, 60 plus 54,000, sorry, 56,000 and plus finally 12,000. 2,48,000 for the government employee. Am I right? Okay, if the calculation is wrong, message me. Actual uh, fully exempted fully exempted in the case of 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 the 9,81,333. It is 66,667. It is not 6 lakhs. Okay. So, in the last case, 6 lakhs 48,000 is the last case. 6 lakhs 48,000 is the last case. Is that clear? So, you can have this picture in your mind and understand this logic. The last illustration, understand what I explained. 
the one third or one to one half of the full computer pension is enjoyable only once in a lifetime. Only once in a lifetime. Adale expired aha me dalu dhisna subsequent ne enjoy pani kla. Dinger ne enjoy kla. Clear? Make note of it.